Colin McRae was a man known as much for his crashing as his winning. The 1995 world champion made his name for some spectacular driving as well as some spectacular crashing. But with Colin, you couldn't have one without the other. That's what made him the fans' favourite. That was his reputation. That's why Colin was so, um, so popular, because life is not just about the perfect results, being number first, first, first. That's, I'm sorry, but that's boring. I mean, I mean, life is all about entertainment. Colin drove flat out and they had the, the, the speed was his thing. And Colin, I always term as a driver who came 11 tenths. Colin was never going to be a 7 or 8 tenths driver and speed up. He was 10 tenths and you had to pull him back. And that's, that's how he went for it all. And that's how he became the people's favourite, the people's champion. Like most young drivers, Colin started his career with a lot of crashes. But when you're learning your boundaries, learning your speed and the limits you can push to, you could say that crashing was just an inevitable part of growing up. We're in a similar situation with, with Yari Matti now as to what Colin. I mean, just absolutely so much natural talent and ability. Uh, but I think a lot of it stems from uh, certain drivers that they want to take on the world and they can't settle. Uh, for being second and they just want to be fastest on every stage they want you know they want to win every event and of course you know, it's 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 uh, it takes a long time to get that experience to be able to do that it didn't take long for the press to give him the nickname of Colin McCrash but the Scot took it all in his stride it was fair enough at the time I certainly did crash quite a lot of cars um, but that was the thing that everybody loved as well you know if people love to see somebody trying hard and if they have an accident, they have an accident. You know, I was prepared to go a gear higher into every corner to beat someone. And you know, generally you would get away with it. But you can only get away with it for so long when you sort of drive with that attitude. Somebody who drives 110%, you can always bring them back 10%. But somebody who can get to 90, it's very difficult getting to, from 90 to 100%. And so to probably one of Colin's biggest crashes ever, and number nine in our countdown. I still don't know exactly what happened. I read the notes as normal. We came into this third gear corner and I thought, we're going too quick. And I mean, all you can do in that situation is sort of scrub as much speed off as you can and attempt to go around the corner or you're definitely going to go off on the outside. Turned in a bit early, clipped a rock on the in rock face on the inside. And flipped the car over, which went straight through, I think, the only gap in the wall. Sort of you land and wait for all the impacts, settle down and they're right here, upside down in your belts. and So I undid my belts. And you're always very disorientated when you're in that situation because everything's completely wrong. Mickey was able to get out, but Colin was trapped in the car for 45 minutes. The, the one in Corsica was the, certainly the one that was... Uh, it was difficult for everybody, I mean, you know, for the whole team, and obviously particularly for him to be... You know, trapping your car upside down for such a period of time and obviously uh, quite badly injured as well. I can't imagine what, uh, what he must have actually gone through. You work with these guys, it's a long time. You can tell by the tone of the voice if something's serious or, or whether it's not serious. When Nicky called in that day, he didn't have to say anything. You could just tell by the tone of his voice that it was a serious accident. Fortunately, we had our team helicopter there with our team doctor there and we had uh, Colin's father, Jim, with us. So we managed to get people to the scene very, very quickly. When a driver's in a traumatised state like that, the first thing he wants to hear is familiar voices. And I think the fact of hearing our team doctor and his father did calm the situation down a lot. Despite breaking his cheekbone in true Colin McRae style, he was back 20 days later in San Remo. I made the decision. So a day, a day after Corsica, that that I would I would get back in the car, and that's you know that's what the goal was. No matter what uh, the doctor said, you know at the end of the day, in that situation, the doctor's always going to err on the side of caution. And unless he had said there was absolutely medically no way that he should be back in the car, then that was the only thing that was going to stop me doing it. And unsurprisingly, number nine isn't the last we'll see of Colin McRae. Sign up now.